What's up guys, coming at you from Macau for a different kind of update. It's different for a couple of reasons. First off, it is going to be audio only. I've been asked a number of times if I was going to do a podcast and I want to slowly ease my way into it. So on the uh, podcast side, it will be audio only and on the YouTube upload, what I think I'll do is when I'm speaking about articles or videos that I've seen, I will still overlay them on top of the uh, video that you're watching here or listening to rather for the time being. And I feel this format will allow me to get more content out more often rather than trying to kind of remember everything and speak it on camera where I inevitably miss out on a lot of topics that I want to cover. The other reason that this is different is because as many of you know, I'm pretty positive about China and pretty amazed at the coronavirus response that they've put together over here. But today I'm going to tell you something a bit darker and more negative in terms of what's been going on recently. And it has to do with discrimination, not towards Chinese, as I usually speak about, but actually coming from Chinese towards foreigners now. To be clear, I haven't personally encountered any discrimination in Shenzhen or Macau as of yet. Granted, I haven't been going out in Shenzhen as much as I have in Macau, but everyone has been super friendly on the Macau side, and I really doubt there will be much discrimination developing here. However, I am getting a bit concerned about the mainland side. To let you know a bit about what has raised these concerns, I will tell you about some of the stories happening here on the ground that I've heard of. The first was from a friend who also has a brewery and bar in the China mainland side. But unlike my place, his customers are mostly non-Chinese expats. What he has experienced is very regular visits by police and additional requirements to keep a log of his customers' passports numbers and the times they visited. This by itself might not be enough to raise a red flag. There are strict controls in place for everyone. However, the police specifically told him that it is because he has many foreign customers that they need him to check and track more carefully or have some additional measures in place at least. He had a pretty interesting reflection from this experience. What he said to me was that as a white male, this is the first time that he's started to somewhat understand what it's like to be discriminated against based on skin color or nationality. There are other stories across the country from locals avoiding getting into elevators to foreigners or hotels asking for an incredible amount of additional information from foreign guests. I have not yet heard of any violence towards foreigners like you saw when overseas Chinese were being targeted, but nonetheless, this is quite a shock to uh, experience this in a country that's always treated foreign visitors really well. Now it seems that no matter whether you're a foreigner who hasn't left China for years or you're a temporary visitor, people are reporting or saying that they are feeling a little less welcome recently. There was one video I saw that was particularly sad and I'm not sure how real it is or not, but it was posted by a foreign, presumably a white woman who was married to a Chinese man. And in the video she explained that her husband and daughter were allowed to eat, in, eat inside the restaurant they were going to but she was asked to stay outside and wait for them. The Chinese brand of discrimination here is just as ignorant as discrimination anywhere, but it seems a little less hateful because they still ended up giving her a bowl to use and a chair to sit on outside so that her husband could bring food out to her. I mean, that's still a pretty dehumanizing event that she had to go through. But getting back to the ignorance point, this really shows what, of course, we already know, that there are ignorant people all around the world, no matter where you are. And isn't that really the case that so very often racism is simply a combination of fear plus ignorance? In this case, with the fears being that coronavirus will be imported back into China after the country has sacrificed so much to fight this. And so the fear factor in this particular case just happens to be extremely high. The propensity for something like this to happen is probably compounded by the fact that China hasn't had a long history of open immigration and they don't have as much experience with needing to build specific anti-discrimination laws, at least in the context towards foreigners who are visiting. Maybe they see foreigners as more privileged to begin with, so this doesn't seem like as big of an issue compared to marginalizing a vulnerable or underprivileged group. I'm not sure, I'm just listing out theories here at the moment, but it's an interesting thing to see, and I hope it's something they learn from here in China. While they might not have had as much experience with this kind of stuff, I still find it pretty inexcusable considering they know how Chinese are being treated overseas right now. And mainlanders have had experiences with being discriminated against in Hong Kong as well. 
So it should be obvious enough that they shouldn't do the same to others, or at least go in that direction. If they want to put any and all travelers from overseas into quarantine or through additional checks when they enter China, that might make sense. But to let them in to only then discriminate against them afterwards is wrong. I feel that's also one of the reasons why I don't worry that in Macau we will see the same issue. The locals here know that there are strict controls at the border entry points here for quite a while, and everyone is carefully checked. So they're pretty confident that once you're in, you're probably fine. China did just announce that people coming in from 25 different countries do need to undergo a quarantine now, but I'm not sure if it will really change what's happening on the ground. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. This is a topic that seems to be dividing a lot of people in general as well. There's a foreign businessman from Shanghai who I follow, and he is usually very positive about China, but he was complaining about a few of his experiences with discrimination here. One was his recent experience re-entering China, and the other was about an apparent rule that all foreigners in uh, Shanghai need to go to fever clinics for any issue, even if it's not fever or kind of flu-related. This policy doesn't exist in Shenzhen, and if it really does exist in Shanghai, this seems pretty wrong to put all foreigners at risk by mixing them in with potential coronavirus cases, no matter what they want to visit the hospital or clinic for. There was a Shenzhen-based social media celebrity of sorts, um, of Chinese ethnicity, who took issue with his complaining. She targeted him for complaining about not being able to go to his posh private clinics and complaining the moment that policies do not favor foreigners, while previously all along foreigners are given special treatment in China and he didn't complain about the lack of fairness then. She also spoke about how many international schools are only open to foreign passport holders as an example. While there are additional layers of complexity to this and there are workarounds for Chinese who are wealthy enough to send their kids to international schools to begin with, her rant is founded in a growing dissatisfaction surrounding how well foreigners are treated in China, at least compared to ordinary locals. The issue with the double standard and not speaking up when it works in your favor is a valid criticism, but I think it's a bit awkward to be okay with this doctor visit policy. I don't necessarily think she was okay with that. It didn't seem like that was her main point. And I believe her irritation was compounded by how smug some of this particular Shanghai guy's based tweets can often come across as. I'm not here to pick sides in this fight though, and I'm only bringing it up to really illustrate this growing issue and divide that's happening in China right now. It's unfortunate for China because so many of the people that are being discriminated against are pretty pro-China people, if you want to call it that. And it's a good way to alienate the ones who are a bit less patient if they're expected to be discriminated against while China figures out what to do and what not to do. I think that's one of the most important points here is that China needs to learn from a lot of the things that have happened during this coronavirus situation. And I hope this is one of the things that's added to that list. This experience might be far more of a shock to somebody who is white and who hasn't really experienced discrimination in this kind of way before. But I'm a bit less likely to think that it's going to be much better anywhere else during these kinds of black swan events, so to speak. I remember very clearly what it felt like to be a brown guy after 9-11 in North America and suddenly be selected for additional screening more often in airports while people around Canada and the U.S. were targeted for even looking Muslim, including one guy who wasn't even Muslim but was murdered by somebody who wanted to take revenge for those terror attacks. In many ways, this is a kind of societal ignorance-based discrimination that nobody really has figured out or at least gotten perfect yet. I'm not going to lie though, and I'm going to say that I still am pretty disappointed in China, particularly when it comes to the authorities targeting even foreigners who haven't left China, because suddenly this becomes institutionalized ignorance. I did reach out to somebody who works in the government and told him that this was particularly ridiculous, and he was embarrassed to say the least. He knows it's ridiculous, and he said that because the biggest fear is coronavirus coming back in after this has been controlled so carefully here is, an, is a f feature or an element that's causing some pretty rational decisions. I think the lack of action from foreign governments to do even a fraction of what China is doing is compounding these fears from people here. In regards to that fear, I kind of understand it quite well. I pretty much got no sleep last night and it's because when I checked my phone in the early AMs, I saw a story that r had me really worrying. The story I saw was of a man in America waiting the two days it usually takes to get your test results back after being tested for coronavirus who decided to travel while he was waiting for those results. 
and in mid-flight, I guess through the internet services that are now available on some of these planes, he found out that he was positive. The entire flight and everybody on that flight was put at risk, and the government told anyone who might have come in contact with him to self-quarantine. This shocked me for so many reasons. First, the obvious selfishness of the man who traveled. So selfish that he probably even has the ability to make people reconsider their opinions on forced quarantines when you're reminded that people like him exist. Second, the fact that it takes two days to get test results back. And third, that the people who came in contact with him kind of sounded like they've got to figure this out on their own and self-quarantine somehow if they can. It gave me a really sinking feeling that this is going to get a lot worse. I really hope I'm wrong and everyone starts to up their game here. This has made me pretty nervous about what to expect when I cross back onto the mainland side from here, considering the current environment of discrimination and the incompetence of many foreign governments at the moment. What happens during that trek back across the border and any discrimination I happen to come across in the near future is something that I will bring to you on my upcoming updates. All right, guys, so that's my rant for today. So as usual, stay safe, take all the precautions you should be taking during this time, and I'll catch you in the next update. Peace.